I want to say just one more thing. In the notes, we have um, discussion of scope and closures, and there's some tricky bits to this that I want to make you I want to make you aware of, and some evolving best practices and standards within JavaScript that you're going to run into. So some of what I'm going to tell you is, I guess you could call it legacy behavior, and you won't see as much of it these days, except that there is so much JavaScript code out there. And uh, one of the major philosophies of, of the web and JavaScript is that you don't break backward compatibility. So where lots of companies, they ship their technology and the new version of whatever technology they ship, they just they get rid of the old one. They don't care about the old one. Whereas the web, uh, we want things to continue to work on the web years, decades, etc. after they were created. So if we constantly break JavaScript and HTML and all these things in the future, it's going to mean that all the old things that we've built just won't work anymore. So, all right. So let me try and explain some of these things to you. So once upon a time, you had to use var when you were declaring a variable. And this still works, and you'll see lots of people using var, although since ECMAScript 6, it's become more popular to use let and const because they, especially, I think let has probably been what most people have settled on, and you'll see me using let a fair bit. Um, they've solved a few subtle bugs that happen with var. So the thing to understand about the way that var works is that var de declares a variable and it is going to be declared in the current function scope where you find this variable. So as an example, if I say um, var, I don't know, var t, like so, um, t is now defined and what is the scope of T? Like when I say scope, I mean, where does it exist? Where is it defined? What is the lifetime of this variable? Well, T is defined in the global scope. This is a global variable. And it means that um, T is going to exist as long as the global, <clears throat> the global scope exists. So in JavaScript, it's also possible for you to use variables without declaring them. So this is a bad practice, and I'm going to encourage you just not to do this. However, the language does allow it. But if you're coming from strongly typed languages with static checks, like compiled languages, you can't do this anyway. You can't just use variables without defining them. So if you're used to doing that in other languages, you're not really going to struggle with this in JavaScript, but be aware of it. So for example, if I say s is equal to hello, that works, even though I've never declared s. So when you use a variable and don't declare it, what JavaScript is going to do is it's going to start looking for a variable in the containing scopes. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by this until it hits the global scope. It's going to go looking for this variable to see if it's been defined. And if it gets all the way up to the global and it finds that the variable doesn't exist, it will just automatically create a global variable for you. So when you say s equals hello, it's going to automatically do that. If I, if I were to write uh, over here, if I had a function, if I said function f, and in here I said s equals hello. So if I did this, what would it do? Well, it would look inside of this scope. So this is the scope of the f function scope. So everything inside of this function, all of the code that's here, there could be thousands of lines of code or there could be one line of code. It's going to go looking for s. It doesn't find s. So what it's going to do is it's going to come up here and it's going to define s like that. It's you're not going to see that, like the code doesn't actually get written, but that's really what's happening here. When you use S without declaring it, it's going to automatically create this global variable for you. So be aware of that. Um, and whenever, because JavaScript does this, 
it means that certain things are certain things are possible. So for example, if I did this in my code, how does that change what's going on here? Well, JavaScript is going to parse this code and when it sees var s like this, it's going to what's called it's going to hoist it. So it's going to move that declaration up to the top of the scope. So here's another rule I think you should follow. I think it's a good idea in general for you to declare your variables when you use them or to declare them before you use them and declare them at the top of your scope. So if you're going to declare them, you know, variables in a function, you might do something like this. So really what's going to happen is JavaScript, the runtime is going to hoist this declaration of S up to the top of the scope. And when you're working with, when you're working with var, it means when you say something, uh, when you declare something with var, it's going to have function scope. So it's going to exist inside of this whole function. So let me show you another piece of code. What if I did this? What if I said for var i equals zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus, and we do something with i. What is the scope of I? Well, coming from languages like C and C++, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this has block level scope. So you might be thinking that I exists inside this for loop and nowhere else. But that's not, what, that's not what's happening here. So this is really the same as saying var I up here. That variable, when you declare anything with var, these variables have function and not block scope. So remember that var means function scope. And when you use let, if I said let, let is going to give me block scope and not function scope. So they're both useful, but be aware, uh, be aware that there's a difference between the two and you'll see You'll see people using using both of them, and you'll see old code always using var and having to do certain tricks in order to get this stuff to work. Okay, so we could define var like this. We could say var s like so. We could also declare we call we could also declare s as a argument to the function. So that creates a local variable. So that would work, um, and that's the scope that it's you know that it's it's available in. So what if I did this? What if I said var s and then down here I said console.log s? What would that do? Well, in this case, s is confined to the function scope as opposed to this global scope. So here I'm trying to use s and s I'm looking for s in the current scope. The current scope is the global right here, right? And there is nothing called s here. So if I print this, what will it print? Undefined. If I did console.log s here, what would it print? It would print hello because it's looking for s inside of the current scope. What if I did this? So now I've got a variable that lives in the global scope. And if I execute this code here, what will it do? It will say, I'm looking for S and I find S in my current scope, in the global scope. What happens if I run this code here and I say console.log S? What it's going to do is it's going to look inside of the current scope, inside of this function to see if S is defined, and it's not going to find it. So then what it's going to do is it's going to start looking on what we call the scope chain. So every function has a chain, like you can think of it like links in a chain that go out toward the global. So this function is a scope, and then it is chained to this outer scope here, which is the global scope. So what would happen? What would it print? 
it would print hello because it would go up to the global scope. It would find this and it would, it would work. Um, if I didn't have this code here, what would it print? Console.log s. It would look for s in the current scope. It wouldn't find it. It would go up to the global scope, look for s. It wouldn't find it. And so it would print undefined, right? So this scope chain is really important. So it allows us to do it allows us to do some interesting things, and I'm I'm going to talk about talk about that. So I think a lot of what I've just told you here is probably not going to be surprising. This idea that you have to declare variables where you use them, but there's something else that we do in JavaScript that's going to make this um, kind of interesting. Let me show you an example. Um, here, let's take a look at this function here. So we have a function var x equal one. Let me just copy this code over here. x equal one. We have a function called parent. Inside this, what do we do? var x equal two. That's interesting. Inside of this function, what else do we do? We define another function. Now, this is going to be something that you may not have thought to do before, but in JavaScript, we do this all the time. It's very, very common in JavaScript for you to write functions inside of other functions. So you define a function which is local to this function and you use that function in here. There's a number of reasons we do this. I'm going to talk about one of them in a minute. But for now, let's just agree that it's possible. So I can have a function that does this. Now, what will this print? So if I were to call down here, if I were to say parent, what would get printed? What value would get printed? Let's try and walk through this. So I call parent, parent comes in here, and before parent, what is the value of x on this line of code? Well, x in the global scope is equal to one. So that's what x equals right here. That's what x equals when we call parent. We come into parent and immediately the first thing that happens is we have var x equal two. So now what's happened is we have a new x. We have a new x which overwrites or overrides or shadows the global x. So this x that we've declared here is not the same as this x up here. And what's going to happen is inside the scope of this function, x is going to have the value that we assign to it in this scope. So remember, well, I'll come back to this, but the scope chain means that when we need a value, we're going to start walking back on the scope chain until we find the nearest one to what we want to use. So inside the parent function, x equals two, not one. Okay. So then we define this function here, we call child three. So take a look at this function. So inside the child function, we define a local variable via an argument and we're passing in the value three. So what is the value of X here? We have another, we're gonna override the X in parent and we're gonna use the value three. So if we were to log this, we would get three, like so. What would happen if I changed it to x? So now we're saying, call child and get the value of x. So the, the JavaScript runtime is going to say, where is x defined? So it's gonna look in the current scope. The current scope, here we have var x equal two, it'll stop right there and it'll use that value. So this would pass in two, and then this would say log x. So when we use x, the JavaScript runtime is going to say, let's find the nearest x. Well, the nearest x is inside this scope right here. It's this parameter that was passed to us, this x parameter. But what if, it, what if I didn't have this? What if I ran the code now? What would happen? So we would get to this line of code. It would say, get me the value of X. So it looks for X in the current scope. It doesn't find it. So where does it go next? It's going to go to the next scope in the scope chain. So this function, 
has access to all of the data that's defined inside of it, but it also has access to all of the data that's defined inside of the parent scope. And it has all access to all of the data that's defined in that parent scope. So the scope chain allows us to access data that is above us as we keep going up on the scope chain. So what would this print? If we called child with X, it would pass in the value of X, which is two, and it would go here and it would log it. What if I didn't pass X here? Would it still work? So in this case, console.log X, it looks for X in the current scope, it doesn't find it. So it goes to the next scope and it finds X equals two here. What if I didn't do this? So what if my code looked like this? What would happen now? So I'm deep inside three different scopes, right? I'm inside this child function scope and it's looking for X. It doesn't find it in this scope, so we get rid of this. It looks for it in this scope, it doesn't find it in this scope. So it goes up here and it finds X equals one right here and it prints it out. So what if, what if I didn't have X? What would it do? Console.log X. Well, it's gonna print, it's gonna look for X. Doesn't find it, doesn't find it, doesn't find it, undefined. Now let me show you something else. What if I did this? X equals seven. What is that code gonna do? Well, it's going to look for a variable declared as X in the current scope. Doesn't find it. It's going to look for a variable declared in the parent scope. It's not going to find it. It's going to go up to the global scope and look for it. It's not going to find it. So what it's going to do is it's automatically going to create a, a global variable called X and it's going to assign that value. So this is a bad thing in JavaScript because what you're doing here is you are implicitly leaking a global. So this function, when you call it, it is a side effect of calling this is that it is creating this global variable that you don't expect to have happen in there. So we always want to declare our variables. Like I would want to say let or var here. If I said let or var, there's really not going to be a difference, right? Because in both cases, it's going to be in the current scope or the current block right, which is either the function block. So I can choose which one I would use, var or let, when I'm, when I'm going through and doing this. Okay, so let's take this a little bit further and let me try and introduce this concept of um, closures. Okay, in my experience, this is not an easy thing to understand. So I'm gonna tell it to you once and you're gonna you're you're gonna look at me and say, okay, I don't understand this. And I want you to understand that everybody, the first time they see this, has the exact same feeling. It's gonna take you a few rounds of seeing this and understanding the use cases for it. And we're not gonna see a lot of use cases yet, but we will when we start programming uh, web pages. Okay, so let me give you this concept. Because we have the scope chain. So that is every function has access to the outer functions in which it exists and it can access those variables. We can create what's called a closure. So a closure is a function which closes over, closes over a scope, making it possible for you to retain or hold on to data in a parent scope that would normally disappear when the normal uh, flow of the program ended and the function exited. So if you take a look at this function right here, we have a function f. We define x equals seven. We return x times two. So if I call this function, what is the lifetime of x? Well, x is going to exist as f is being executed, but after I get to the end of this return statement and my function is complete, x is going to go away. So in JavaScript, it's going to get destroyed and it'll eventually, if there's any uh, remaining things that need to be cleaned up, the garbage collector will run. And so x, essentially x doesn't exist anymore. 
How about this function here? So here's a similar function. What's different? We are returning x times 2, same as before. However, we are reaching out from our function f outside of this function scope and we are using excuse me we are using x at the global scope so we're going to use we're going to get 7 from here we're going to use it here so if you look at this code we have a local variable which is defined in the scope of this function if you look at this code we have a global variable or a variable that was defined in an outer scope and we are reaching out and using it. So every function has access to variables that are defined in the local scope, but it also has access to all variables that are defined in outer scopes. Okay, so given that, take a look at this code. We define a function parent. Inside parent, we declare a variable x, x equals 7. Then we define a function child, and we do what? We multiply x times 2. Now notice where x lives. x lives inside of this outer scope but I'm accessing it inside of this inner scope. So this child function, its scope chain goes from everything inside the function scope up to its parent scope, up to the global scope, or however deep it goes. It could be very, very deep. If we return child, and we call child like this, What's going to happen? Let me copy this code over here and let's play with this a little bit. So if I call uh, parent like that, what will I get? So if I call this, I'm going to execute the child function right? I'm going to execute child function and it's going to call x times 2 where x is defined up here. So it's going to return 7 times 2, 14. So it's going to return 14 to me. And after this code ends, all of this, all of this stuff is going to get destroyed. Okay. Now let's modify this code just slightly. What, what have we done? What has changed? So instead of returning, instead of returning child being in, invoked, instead of running child and returning the result, what have we done? We are returning child. What is child? Child is a function. So if we wanted to, we could just return this thing too. We could say return uh, this function so this is going to feel really weird. I have a function which is returning another function. So when I return this function, that means that when I call parent, it's going to receive a value and that value is going to be a function. So I'm going to take this function and I'm going to return it and I'm going to bind it to f. So f is now equal to this function that we defined inside here, okay? Apologies, I had to pause the recording there and I've uh, to deal with something here and I've lost track of my spot. So let me just review. Um, we are returning, we're returning this function and I am calling parent. Parent is going to, when it 
is executed, it's going to return this, this child function. And then I'm binding that to F. So when I then want to call the function, when I call F, what I'm actually doing is I'm calling this child function. So an interesting thing has happened here. If I were to console.log X, I don't have access to X uh, because X is not defined in the global scope. But another really interesting thing has happened. Um, if I were to call F multiple times in a row, um, and let's let's modify this slightly. Let's say um, x x is equal to x plus one. Let's do that, and then let's return x. So if I were to try and log x, I'm going to get undefined because x doesn't exist in the parent scope in the global scope. What happens if I call F? If I call F, it's going to run this code right here. It's going to say X equals X plus one. What is the value of X? Well, it's tempting to think that when I called parent, X was defined inside of parent. And when the parent function completed, at the end of that function, when I returned, that X disappeared. But that's actually not what has happened. Because we defined, we returned a function from within this function, we've created a closure here. So this outer function is closed over top of my inner function, and I still retain access to x because of the scope chain. So remember that a function has access to all of the variables that are defined locally within its scope but it also has access to all of the variables that are defined in the outer scopes if you follow the scope chain. So when I call F, what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get X plus one is eight. And here, what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get X plus one is nine. So X now exists as a like private variable that will live forever. It will live, well, not forever. It'll live as long as F exists. So as long as we have a reference to this function on the inside here, the data inside this function has access to its parent scope and it, we can do some interesting things as a result. So this idea is really, really powerful. Lots of languages let you do it. So JavaScript isn't the only uh, language that has closures, but it's probably the first one that you've run into. And it lets us do some really interesting things where we can, we can keep data from going out of scope while we need it. And we can also hide data from other scopes so that it's, you know, so we, we, don't, um, we, we don't have to create global variables to do all these different things. Take a look at this function here. Let me just copy it. Let's put it over here. Create accumulator takes value and returns a function. The function takes n and it adds n to the value and returns that value. So if I were to say var add is equal to create accumulator and I need to give it an initial value, the initial value, let's say that I give it an initial value of 10. So now when I say add one, what am I going to get? I'm going to get value is going to be equal to value plus n and value is defined inside of the outer scope so i'm returning a function i'm returning a function which is going to retain access to a variable that's defined in an outer scope which means that when i call add one i'm going to get 11. and if i call it again i'm going to get 12 etc so I can call add, but I can't access value directly. I can't set value equal to three because value is not defined in my current scope. It's only defined relative to this function. So as long as I have a reference to this function, which is what I have here, because I returned it out again, then I can do these things with it. So this pattern is, is common where we uh, return 
a function from what we define a function inside of a function. That's that's a key aspect of working with closures, um, making them so that uh, making it so that we can access data in this parent scope. Okay, let's look at a slightly different version of this. What if what if I did this in one line? What if I said let add is equal to This is another really common pattern that you're going to run into in JavaScript. And these things are called uh, immediately, immediately invoked function expressions, I-I-F-E, immediately invoked function expressions. So what have I done here? I have this parenthesis here matches up with this parenthesis here. So really what I'm doing is I am defining a function and um, I'm defining this function and I don't even have to give it a name if I don't want to because I'm not going to use the name to call the function. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to I'm going to define a function expression like so and it's going to get evaluated. That's what this parenthesis is. It's going to get returned and then I'm immediately going to invoke it. So I'm running, I'm defining a function and running it all in one step. And what that's going to do is the add the add variable that I'm creating is going to be assigned the return value of this function, which is itself another function. And the interesting thing about what's going to happen here is that the value is going to be, I'm going to have a closure that I, so that I can access it even after this outer function has been, has been removed, this function has been destroyed. Here I'm passing in 10 as the initial value. So I'm passing in 10 to be able to uh, initialize value and use it. So this, this sort of pattern happens a lot in JavaScript where people are trying to um, keep, they don't want to define a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of globals. And um, so you'll often see code in JavaScript that looks like this. At the top of the file, they'll, they'll do this. And then they'll run the function like that. So inside here, what they'll do is they'll say, you know, let x equals whatever, x equals 8. What we're doing here is we're creating a scope. So we're using functions as a way to create a scope. X doesn't exist here. It doesn't exist in the global scope. And what I'm doing here is instead of, if I didn't do this, I would be creating global variables. So sometimes we use this feature of being able to wrap functions around work that we want to do as a way of um, making it possible for us to hide values or you know embed these values deep inside a scope rather than having them leak into the global scope when we're doing this work. Okay, so scope, hoisting of, of values, using the scope chain, working with closures. These are advanced ideas and I don't expect you to get it the very first time that you see it. So, um, uh, but I want to, sh I want to introduce the idea to you. I want you to be aware of it. And so when you encounter it, it doesn't seem completely alien to you. I want you to understand that we're going to use functions in lots and lots of interesting ways with JavaScript, and you're going to see them used and abused in all sorts of ways. Anyway, I'll pause it there. I really can't emphasize enough the value of working through the readings, working through the, um, down here at the bottom, working through these practice problems, giving yourself lots of chance to play with this and understand how it works so that um, you start to feel more and more comfortable with what's possible building, building out these functions.